Good afternoon. It's a cold, blustery day here in Townsend, Delaware, with temperatures barely making it over the freezing mark. But the dead of winter is the perfect time to take hardwood cuttings. So today, I'm going to trim back this dormant grapevine, and we're going to take hundreds of hardwood cuttings off of here and put them in the ground to root. Grapevines grow prolifically during their active stage in the summertime and each branch of the vine can reach up to 10 to 12, sometimes 13 feet in length. So when pruning your grapevines back, which by the way, promotes good, healthy fruit with a nice, heavy pruning. Instead of throwing these on the mulch pile, this one piece of vine here will probably give me 25 cuttings. It's loaded with nodes. Even though they're spaced a little further apart, the cuttings are a little normal than, longer than normal cuttings but we will end up getting hundreds of cuttings out of the grapevine plant that I have in my yard. I had to move my operation into my shop. It was so cold outside. And one little tip that is probably a video in itself is in order to stay warm, I've learned after carrying mail outside for 28 years if you keep your feet and your head warm, the rest of you will follow. And the key to that is wool socks and a wool hat. I trimmed a couple more manageable pieces of branches off of the grapevine and brought them inside with me so I can show you the process of cutting these into cuttings. You start at the base of the cutting. The cuttings will want to be facing down with the bottom in the ground and the top above the ground. Um, you can see that this is a viable branch because of the green and the membrane that's inside of the stalk. If that was just a hollow stalk, that would be a non-viable piece that would never root so the first thing you want to check is to make sure that you have a viable branch in hand now the nodes at the very base here are where your roots are going to develop from so when you cut you want to take that cut right below that node so that you don't interfere with these nodes or damage them in any way and then as you move up you will see a second node with a little bit of a branch growth on it. We're going to just take that branch growth off of there. And we're going to go about an inch above this node and cut him there. And that will be the top of the cutting. The reason that we leave an inch or so above that top node is for two reasons. For handling purposes, without damaging the top nodes, we can just grasp onto that one inch section to stick it in the ground. The other reason that we do that is to help differentiate the top from the bottom. The top of the cutting will have that one inch section and the bottom will be cut right up against the node. That's done so that if you happen to mix them around and you can't remember top from bottom, this is a surefire way of remembering which end goes in the ground. So let's take a second cutting. We have the remaining branch from the first cutting that we took, which is a, a non-viable section. Uh, if you were to plant this in the ground without a node, uh, it will lead to uh, just root rot and probably 
damage your entire cutting to the point where it won't root. This area will not root. You have to have a node like so to root. So we'll take our cutters again and go just below that node and cut there. So that'll be the base of our next cutting. We move up the stem and there we have another branch growth that we're going to just snip off. And we'll go about an inch above that second node and cut him. So there's two cuttings that we have. We'll go up to the next node, cut just below because that will be your base. We'll trim that little piece off. And here we have some tendrils that have grown on the vine. So we're going to take the tendrils off, move on up to the next node, go about an inch above him. That's cutting number three. Looks like we have one more cutting left in this four foot section. So we'll go up to the next node, cut just below him for the base. Trim off this little excess branch and go up to the next node, go an inch above, just like we did with the previous ones. Cut him and there we have four cuttings out of just that four foot section. All viable in the top with nice green membrane inside and the same with the bottom. So once these are stuck, they'll have a very good chance of rooting. Usually the rooting uh, percentage on these is about 70 to 80 percent. Um, if you use a rooting hormone powder or liquid and dip the base of the cutting into that hormone powder, and then stick it in the ground, it will have a slightly better chance of rooting. A lot of these will just root on their own without the help of hormone powder, but it does increase your percentage slightly uh, in the rooting process. Now it's time to take them out to the uh, rooting beds and I'll show you the process of getting these in the ground. Before we do that, I wanted to show you the rooting hormone that I use. You can use any rooting hormone that's readily available on the market. But one thing that I do is I'll take some of this hormone powder and I'll pour it in a little cup, in this case, the base of a water bottle. And I'll use that cup to dip my cuttings into the powder instead of putting the cuttings directly into the jar of rooting hormone. The reason for that is that you don't wanna cross contaminate with different varieties of plants. Uh, you might possibly have a plant that has a disease and it gets in your whole can of rooting powder and then you would have to replace the entire thing. So it's best just to um, just pour a little bit into, a, into a, a little saucer or a cup and use that for your dipping method. Here we have one of my rooting beds that we're gonna put our grapevine cuttings in. Um, this bed just consists of contractor sand, which is fine for rooting all types of different cuttings. It's fairly coarse, has good drainage. Uh, you can use potting soil or dirt or just plant your cuttings directly into the ground if it's not frozen. But uh, there's a misting system built into this bed, so in the warm weather, these plants will be misted on a regular basis to eliminate the need for me to come out and water. Now what I'll do before sticking the cuttings is take a large plaster scraper and just do a little bit of opening there. Make a little trench that will help the rooting hormone stay on the bottom of the cutting before I actually stick it in the ground. Also, this sand has been a little moist and it's so cold that it's a little frozen. So that also helps give me some depth to the cutting. So let's plan our first cutting. We can differentiate the top from the bottom on this cutting because the nodes at the top have the extra one inch length on them. The node at the bottom is cut flush at the base. So simply take the base of the cutting, dip it in your hormone rooting powder, 
just so the base is covered and then insert your cutting into the trench. Go down about two inches, that's plenty. Let's do another one. Top, bottom, dip it in the rooting powder, go about two to three inches between them and stick it down to the base. I have three more to do. Top, oh I'm sorry, top, bottom, dip it in the powder, and insert it in the sand. It's that simple. Now these are going to remain in this sand probably through next summer. Hardwood cuttings are notoriously slow rooters, but once they are established, they're much stronger than softwood cuttings and you will have much more success with them. Uh, simply try to keep them a little on the moist side. Don't trench them and they'll be fine. After they're stuck, you want to go back and just close, close them up or like I like to say, put them to bed. And being outside poses no issue to them. They're already dormant. They're used to being in a freezing cold and they have an internal clock that when the days get longer and warmer. They will initiate their own growth. They'll know when to put out leaves and grow roots. So it's just a matter of getting them in the ground and playing the waiting game. And uh, by the end of next summer, towards early next fall, we are going to have a slew of rooted grapevines. Um, I'm, I may start a waiting list for plants if you uh, are interested in any of these. Um, also, if you don't want to go through the process or are unable to go through the process of getting your own cuttings, around the end of March, I will be putting just unrooted cuttings up for sale and you can try this process yourself. Uh, just mention your name and contact information in my comment section and uh, I'll be sure to put you on the list for some. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please press the like and subscribe button, and that way you won't miss any more of my upcoming videos. You all have a great day, and may God bless you all.